keep you in the world. Hallelujah. Do you really surrender to His love? His, his love goes deeper than just your your thinking and your and your singing the songs and his love. Pastor Brian, you ready to You wanna you wanna get a podium up here or you wanna minister on the stage? Okay. Alright, you wanna be doing that? Uh, John, can you help him with his easels and stuff and everything and we'll be getting ready. Uh thank you. Let's pray over our offering. Uh, you know, as we get to, you know closer and closer to the tribulation of, of uh, the seven-year period, it's, it's going to get tougher and tougher, and your loyalties and your love's going to have to is going to be tried. So you know, we need to stay in a focus that He's our only hope. Amen. Not man, not not the system, not the system, not the government. Only him. He's a jealous God. And you know, kind of like the scripture says, we're in the valley of decisions. The valley of decisions. The offer today we're gonna pray over that God help us to to disperse the funds in the areas where it needs to go and it will be sufficient for the cause. Father, we just thank you that people are obedient and they're given. I thank you for those that, that consistently support the ministry and, and serve the ministries and, the, and the, the ministries to Israel and, and uh, the, the homes, the, the meals, whatever's going on, Lord, the, His reaching hands, everything that's going on, we thank you for calling us uh, to do these things. And Lord, we thank you for equipping us. Lord, we do pray for labors because the labors are few. And Lord, we give you all the glory for everything you do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand, clap and pray. Hallelujah. Ricky's going to run. Okay. Okay, there. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Steve is known uh, Reverend Friday. Uh, he's retired from up the up at the Methodist Church up the road. I'll let him tell you all about that if, he, if the Lord leads him to. But uh, uh, we had church over to BP a week or so ago, and. Uh, Power of the Holy Ghost coming down on us and uh, just moved so mildly. I just fell in love with this brother. First time I met him, but it's just like just like we've known each other all our lives. I mean, uh, it's not every day you find a, a spirit-filled Methodist. <laughs> but uh, you know, I was, my parents and grandparents was all raised Methodist. And, my sister, uh, all of us went to Methodist Church as children and everything. And, and you know, I remember whenever I was real small before my mom and dad quit going to church when I was about six or seven, uh, you know, or eight, somewhere in there, they quit going to church. But I remember they had some really good, powerful services. I mean, the Holy Spirit moving, the Word being preached, and the anointing flowing from the front to the back. And the uh, church was full, and... Uh, just brought back memories. We was, we was about to shout over in the parking lot of the BP. Praise the Lord. But uh, uh, evangelist now, uh, Reverend Pastor Evangelist uh, Wayne Friday uh, is his name, and he's uh, just retired, and he's on the on the evangelistic field now, getting meetings set up and everything. And he's, he needs a lot of prayer. You know, you have to have that anointing go before you and prepare your way. So I want uh, our, I want the Lord's church here to, to put him on our prayer 
list and uh, and consistently pray and 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 you know uh, he's on a fixed income him and his wife and and it's not very much so if you feel led to 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 support him in some way which you know might be a good good thing you know uh, I t tell him you know the reason we don't invite people to preach and to come and sing and everything so much is because we're a volunteer ministry. Uh, no one gets a payday. Every penny that comes in that offering plate goes to support the ministries that are going on, the orphanage. There's three we three orphanages we support consistently, and one that we supported in Israel helped rebuild over there uh, back when it burnt down. But uh, you know so. That's where the where your tithes and offerings goes into those fields. This is the men's and women's home, the Reaching Hands ministry out there at Eagleton, and so on and so on. So, uh, welcome, my brother in the Lord.
and and uh, yeah, see, see, that's why that's why the Lord gave me evangelism, but He's going to send me out so she can rest. After 40 years of ministry, Pastor David, she's wore out, she's tired, she's done children's work, and played the piano, and she worked herself. She just the most great. But she said, "Honey, I, I I know you're fired up. You're going to preach till you die, so you go travel out. Just like have my car, and I'll go where I want to go." <laughs> But anyway, anyway, uh, what I want to do is what God has called me to do 30 years ago. 30 years ago in the church in Jackson. I was sitting in my study and I said, Lord, why is the church growing? I'm preaching. I'm loving people. Why is it not growing? And I listened and the Holy Spirit seemed to whisper to me. I didn't hear a voice, but whisper. Well, when have you led anybody to Christ? And I thought, well, I didn't leave anybody to Christ. Well, that's why your church is not growing. And uh, I got a book by D.L. Moody out of my library. Anybody heard of D.L. Moody? Raise your hand. I read that book on so many and I got so fired up. I went out every night. I went out and knocked on doors, won the friendship, did the plan of salvation, got them in discipleship. And uh, we went, Pastor David, about 45 to 160. We had about 250 on a special occasion. And I was invited back to my Bible college uh, to speak. And uh, it was a great, it was a great honor. So I feel my gift. You know, everybody's got gifts. Gift of healing, gift of, you know, whatever. The, the, the gifts that are mentioned in the Bible. Uh, gift of tongues, gift of understanding, gift of healing, gift of public wisdom, whatever. And, uh, but, uh, but the gift the Lord gave me is holy. I, I love I love sinners. I love, I love people at the bars. I went to the bar. See, now that I'm not pastor, I don't have a word to answer to, so I went to the bar myself. And uh, because I was in the bar when the Holy Spirit spoke to me, I was sitting there with a bottle of beer when the Holy Spirit came in. God raised the church. I knew that. And my heart started pounding. I knew it was conviction. And I tried to hide it. And But about a month later, it was something I did. I said a little prayer in the beer joint. I said, Lord, if this is you, I said, I dare you. I dare you to say it. But I said, if you know I'll be a hypocrite or a church member, I said, just leave me alone. I want to go to hell here and not a church member and a hypocrite. That's what I told him. And about a month later, I come home and went upstairs and shut the door, lit up a camel cigarette, had no idea, smoking two or three packs a day, that that'd be my last nicotine cigarette. I had no idea. Thank you, Jesus. I smoked the cigarette because I knew I shut the door. If mom catch me, she's going to pop bottles at me, bruises and everything else, and I could outrun her. Because my dad died when I was 13 years old, so I just about killed my poor mother. And uh, so. I heard footsteps. You know, you know what it is to be on the farm, the bee land and with the window up and the cricket, you hear the cricket? Man, somebody come up my come up those steps and I heard them. But I wasn't drunk either, I was sober. I only got trouble just one time my whole life. But I didn't hear joints anyway. But anyway, man, I heard steps and mom said, you I'm scared to death. And I was in the corner of the room and she throw something hit me or not. And well, mom didn't hit you. And uh, there went my heart. When I asked the Lord, better went again at 2 o'clock in the morning. And the Holy Spirit, it wasn't an audible, audible boy. But maybe some of you say you heard God maybe speak to you. Now, I've seen vision. I mean, I've, God's let me see special things which I can't even share with you. And I know Pastor David has probably been in third heaven like I've been there once, maybe, maybe once or twice in my whole 40, 47 years of being a Christian. But we don't talk about that. But anyway... Uh, uh, I, I, I just, I, my heart started pounding. I raised in church. My mother prayed, prayed for me. And uh, and this voice that said, Wayne, this is your chance you asked for. It's now or never. Now or never. And that never faded out. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll tell you something. When God says something, He means it. Yes, right. And, you know, there's no variation with God. If He says it, He means it. That's right. And, uh, Never. Man, I thought about being lost forever. I mean, I've been preaching preach on the I thought, man, never. And, uh, and I tell you what, God knew what he was saying, Steve, because uh, after I got saved and went to Bible school, every one of my simple friends, most every one of them, got killed. And I know one of them on a motorcycle, racing on Sunday. He got saved one time, then he backslid, turned his back on God, shacking up with the one, and about a motorcycle on Sunday afternoon, and... and uh, uh, and a coma died. One well, thing I hope pray is Doug prayed while he was in a coma. I believe God could do that. Yes. And uh, but anyway, I give my heart to God and uh, and uh, I got down on my knees. I didn't know how to pray that. Well, I knew a little prayer, but I just said, Lord, I said, I, if you'll forgive me, I'll serve you the rest of my life. And, and of course, a lot of people 
but the reason that they see me there because I'm so wicked, wild, and crazy, and, and you know, but there I was. I, I, I mean, you know, if God deals with you, you don't know what you'll do. So I got down and I said, Lord, forgive me. And I said, Lord, I can't put sin in a mold. But if you'll help me, I'll do it. I'm smoking too many packs a day. I can't do it. Now, at that time, I didn't know he had a hand on me for preaching because I stuck. And so I said, but if you'll help me, I'll quit. Lord, I can't quit drinking. I didn't like the beer. I liked the bread and I had to mix it. And I said, but I can't quit it no more. But if you'll help me, I'll quit. I said, Lord, I can't quit running around with it. But if you'll help me, I'll quit it. You know, I don't understand these men with men and women. Man, that's the most sickening thing. I tell you, God, God made a woman so beautiful, man. I'm telling you what. I told David we went and got a rise and bone for me the other day. This girl was beautiful. I said, David, why did God make so many beautiful women on this earth? <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean. And uh, so I said, Lord, I can't, I can't quit running around. You get God to help me. And he did. That's August the 14th, 1966. And from that moment to this moment, I made, I made a lot of mistakes. I made a lot of stupid mistakes. Sin of ignorance that I didn't wasn't aware of. That God had to show me. But as far as I know, from age 19 to 65, I'm standing here by the grace of God. I've never willfully, willfully, or practiced. No one said God has kept me by His grace. But even, but even, even if I would have called Him, He would have picked me back up, and I could have kept going. Yeah. See, I'm looking saying there was a difference between me and that man of the gutter. And I've been on Skid Row preaching. I've been on Skid Row services. Me and some boys from Bible College went there, and and, and uh, man, I got scared. I went down Skid Row, Madison Street, Chicago, and I was inviting these drunkards in and people, and and man, one one of them, one of them was, uh, was 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 demon possessed, and. Uh, he took off. He's going to stab and kill him. Yeah. Well, 14 years old, I was scouted by the sister that read the baseball. He didn't know I could run faster than he could. <laughs> I took off running, man. I tell you what, I took off running. I mean, I should have just stood there and said hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost do one, but I just took off running. <laughs> man, I ran to that chapel where my prayer partner, where the Jeep and stood. I mean, I went curved to the front seat, sat right here. <laughs> I thought he stabbed me. He gonna have to get through the door and come up here and get <laughs> And uh, but you know it's so sad those people and those guys in Chicago on Master Street and Alley. They're captains of the army. They're lawyers. They're bank executives. You know, uh, sin, sin. How's that go? Um, sin will take you further than you want to go. There's a statement there. I'm not sure how it goes. How's it go, David? Love you want to stay. Love you want to that cost you more than what you want to pay. And uh, and so anyway, um, but anyway, I, I appreciate Pastor David. I'll tell you what, truly, truly, in all of my 47 years being a Christian, 40 years in full-time ministry, pastor, one of the most humble men I've ever met. Well, I mean, when I, when I met him, I didn't know he was. I was just sitting there, you know. And Steve, when he got up, he said, you knew you was talking to him. And I said, no. He said, Pastor David. About blow me away. So I went out and asked him to lay hands on me and pray for me for my soul and what God's called me to do. And uh, I want to go to small churches that run 20, 30 and, and have an outreach on Friday night where I give the plan of salvation like I'm going to do here. And uh, then Saturday do a training on soul winning and on discipleship. And then Sunday maybe give my testimony how I was converted. And then Sunday night preach on spirit filled life or godly living or preach on prayer. So that, that's my agenda. And I'm, I'm so fired up, and I've got faces. That, well, I thought I was done when I had this cancer. December, I had rectal cancer surgery. I've had open heart surgery. I have a gallbladder taken out. I thought, man, well, where's this going to stop? I mean, you know. And uh, and so uh, I, I, I had cancer surgery. This is the first time I've preached in four or five since December, since the last of November. Um, and they want me to take radiation chemo. I turned it down. And my son's got me on $500 for the products a month. If that don't cure me, nothing will. If you saw me two months ago, I was kind of humped over and weak and barely making it. Now I've got all those natural, pure products and I've got energy to burn. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think he's here tomorrow, but I feel good today. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Does anybody understand this, what I'm going to tell you? The devil hates sowing. You can pray, you can go to church, you can feed the poor, you can do all you want to. You try to win souls. 
I mean, I went out calling and I hit my head or stubbed my toe. You won't, you won't believe that. I mean, you're all humble, so I can, I will keep this secret. But I have a plate in my upper left here. I have a uh, upper plate. Would you believe? I've had that for 18 years. If there's anything I watch is my, it's my denture and my glasses. That's two things I make sure. Every time I go out the door, comes a honey, got your up on, yeah, my license. You got your, got your denture, yeah, I got my denture. You got your glasses, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Two days ago, I lost, I don't know, the devil stole from me. <laughs> if I had to told you, you probably wouldn't know. As long as I don't smile, you'll never know. <laughs> but David Boulder's son, Dad, he said, if you don't find him, I'm not going to that church Sunday. <laughs> But anyway, I can't help it. But you're a pastor. You're good. I'll take mine out too. But your pastor, your pastor is one of the most humble. I've met a lot of people. Greek, uh, you know, back in Bible college, the Dr. Wilcox had taught Greek and the doctrine of holiness, which, which he wrote his own textbook. One of the you meet him in the hall is like meeting a little child, just humble. And you know, to be humble, you got to be spirit filled. You you gotta you gotta get rid of carnality and be filled with the spirit because it's not you, it's Christ. So if there's any good, it's gotta be it's, it's gotta be God. It's gotta be Christ through us. And 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 the more a man thinks he knows, the less he knows. And the more I learn, the more I realize what less I know. And, and uh, so anyway, but anyway, I appreciate your humble pastor. Takes no income. Gives of John David, he takes no income off just a veteran. His wife gives him uh, tomato soup every night or day, you know, make sure he gets something to eat. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, Pastor David, David, John, Nate, listen, if you're getting extra money, give this man, give him an offer. He, he gives it all to feed the poor, to buy furniture, support orphanages, and whatever he does. And so I'm on now, I'm on social security. I just, I just let this pastor go right over here for a car across the it's been 14 years. And, uh, and, uh, and so uh, I'm on social security. So, anyway, uh, I'm looking for the camp green bean. No. <laughs> so, anyway, anyway, uh, but the Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. Yeah. 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 Now, basically, I wanted to do see, I go to a church on weekend meeting. It's the plan of salvation Friday night, Saturday training, Sunday preaching testimony. But the Lord gave me a little message to give. I don't know who this is for. In 40 years uh, preaching, I've never preached this. Well, I'm sure I have. I mean, intermittent somewhere but I said at uh, Shoney's over here uh, over by, by what is it the, uh, uh, the the mall you know where Shoney's is over there on 321 and I sat there last night from 10 to 1 o'clock in the morning wrote this out and uh, oh Lord help me I'll be I, I, Lord help me if I'll keep it short they will kill me so just pray for me we but anyway, listen, I do have, David, don't, 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 don't start the clock on me on the plan of salvation until I preach this little sermon the Lord gave me. I don't know who this is for, but there's somebody here that evidently this is for. Because I, I have, all I was going to do was get up here and give the plan of salvation. And I sat there at the Shoney's and, and I just started writing. And, and of course, I write, every, I write everything. In homiletic class and, and, and Bible school and college, some say, well, if you're called to preach, you don't use notes. And, uh, all this stuff and kind of make me feel bad. And I asked my professor about it. He said, "Wait." He said, "You just do it the way God gives it to you." Amen. Uh, you know. And, and, and I put all my sermons in vanilla folders. They'd be about this long, but I threw every one of them away with the last one. So I don't. Need, I probably couldn't go back and read them anyway if I if I, if I tried it. But uh, but anyway, uh, the greatest sermon ever preached. I mean, other than Jesus. In the 1700s, 1800s, or the early 1900s, the greatest sermon ever preached. Does anybody know what it is? The, the top. But it was by either Jonathan Edwards or Fenwick, Charles Fenwick. I, I can't remember now which one. But they preached a sermon that they said is one of the most powerful sermons ever preached in in the 17, 18, 19th century. Does anybody know what that sermon was? People crawled under the seats to get to the altar. They crawled over the seats. They ran. Crying out to God when he got done. Do you remember what that sermon was? Does anybody know? Okay, but it was either Jonathan Edwards or Charles Penny. I can't remember. But sinners in the hands of an angry God. Yes. Sinners in the hand of an angry God. You know what he did? He prayed and fasted so much. And he had a, a little man that was devoted to intercession. Because see, in preaching, what I read here, if I just sit here and read this, if it's not born of the Spirit, there's going to be no fruit. 
there has to be the spirit of anointing for there to be fruit. Yes. Now, it may seem impressive and it may, may sound maybe a little bit good, but it's nothing. I mean, without the Holy Spirit, there's right. no there's no fruit. Right. So Jonathan Edwards or Charles, what a penny, whatever, which one it was. Uh, Jonathan Edwards. Jonathan Edwards. Jonathan Edwards. I, I told my wife was, and she said, well, thank you, I won't tell her. I was right. <laughs> She said it was Charles Finney. I said, no, it's Jonathan Edwards. Okay. But anyway, Jonathan Edwards got up. Uh, my scripture's going to be St. John 3.16. He just read it. That's all he did. He just read it. And the Holy Ghost. I mean, the Bible says the power is of God, not of us. You know, it's not of us. And the more we can go, the higher he can be. And, and I pray every day, Lord, help me to walk come before you. But thank you, Pastor David. And I thank God for saving me at 19 years old. It's a miracle that I'm not in hell. I, I, wrecked my, I bought a new little Volkswagen, the 65, little bug. And I told Mom I'd use it for church. And she helped me sign to get it. She did. And I quit church. Started going to bars and all this stuff. And, and I wrecked it six times and I demolished it the seventh. And the seventh time, I fell asleep. Now, I was going as fast as you could go, which is 62 miles an hour on a 65. On a 1965 BW Volkswagen, you go 62 top speed. So I fell asleep, and there's a Dayton Power Light truck ahead of me about a half a mile. And I just went to sleep. I passed out for a lack of rest for several days. And if I would have come up and hit that guy in the back end, that big two or three ton truck, I, I would have never known what hit me. I've been in hell. And but I come up right beside it, and my front right fender caught his front left bumper, and it threw me into a rim, pulled me up, steered me in. I thought, man, I'm going to hell, but I didn't have time to pray. And I turned in over in, rolled it sideways, and, and uh, but my mother, her, I'm, I'm sure it's her prayers. I'm sure my mother's prayer, I'd be in hell, but for her godly prayers. And that's why godly prayers are so important. Just stand, stand, in, the, stand in the gap for their children. And, uh, you know, wickedness reproduces wickedness. Godliness reproduces godliness. You know, your cells are always reproducing. If you've got a bad cell, it produces a bad cell. If it's a good cell, it produces a good cell. And, and so, God wants godly people. Amen? Amen. And, uh, but anyway, I gave my heart to the Lord. And, and uh, I've been wicked and wild and crazy. And, uh, but I wrote it. And the state trooper came in the hospital. And he said, Wayne, he said, have you seen your car? And I said, no. And uh, he said, I want you to go by the junkyard, tell me where it's at. He said, I don't know if you believe in God, of course, I've raised in church, I know all about God. He said, I don't know if you believe in God, but he said, even if you don't, he said, Wayne, you need to think of your life because you lost your door on your first place. See, there's mercy break in the middle of that little Volkswagen, you know what I'm saying? That little mercy break. And when I when I started going in over it, I grabbed it without thinking of my wheel. And I just, I just said, baby, let's go. That's what I said, I'm sorry. I wasn't a Christian. I said, let's go with you. And I rolled with it about three times and upside down. Telephone pole right by my head would have knocked my brains out if I'd roll one more time. And so anyway, anyway, uh, I went by the junkyard. I got fifteen dollars out of it for my radio. That was it. Fifteen dollars. So, do you know the little Volkswagen bug? How many knows the Volkswagen bug? The little, you know, the engine used to be in the back, right? Yeah. The spare tire is in the trunk in the front. The the spare tire is in that little front, in the front. And I'm not exaggerating. God forgive me if I am, but I'm not. You can take that rim like a paper cup and smash it in your hand, and that's what's the rim. That's what the rim looks like. Uh, that's what the rim looked like uh, in my car. So if I got what I deserved, I, I would I would be I, I would be in hell today, but I'm so thankful. I would thought I'd knelt down the other day. I said, God, thank you. Thank you for sparing my life and help me give you another chance to serve you. And uh, but anyway, this is going to be sermon number one, and this is going to be sermon number two. Boy, thank you, Pastor. Uh, now I'm going to try quickly go through the plan of salvation, but I feel like there's maybe one person here, and I want I want to just share with you what God laid on my heart for you this morning. Uh, now, there may be more. I don't know. I didn't try to think of all, all of these. But there's at least four types of sins that I want to bring your attention. Now, like I say, this may only be one person here. But uh, I don't know who this is for. But it's evidently for somebody bored with the gift. Because I've never wrote this out before in 40 years. 
But there's four types of sins I want to mention. Number one is original sin. Original sin. And of course that's a sin we're all born with. Am I right? You agree with me? Yes. The original sin from Adam, because they found we're born, we're born bent towards hell. The very moment that we that we are born. The good news about that is, even though it sounds bad, the good news is that we're not held accountable as a little baby child. Now, until we reach the age of accountability, in other words, what that means, accountability, is where it could be five years old, 10, 15, 20, I don't know where, but wherever the Holy Spirit speaks to you and draws you, you either accept Him or you reject Him. That's the moment that you become accountable for your sins. Yes, that's right. Whenever the Holy Spirit tugs on your heart, you either reject or, I mean, it's just as simple as that. And so that's the original sin and uh, uh, that we're all born with because of, because of Adam. Number two, uh, the second sin is a sin of unbelief. Uh, you know that you should get saved, but you don't. I don't know. The way I see you clapping here, everybody. I thought, Lord, am I supposed to preach you? Everybody here is converted. And the ones not converted come up and got saved before I even got up here. And, and, so, and so anyway, but anyway, uh, number number two, the sin of unbelief. You you know you should get saved, but you just keep putting it off. Uh, and of course, the devil will try to convince you, wait till tomorrow. Well, you know what happens in psychology? We talk, tomorrow never come. Tomorrow is today. And, and the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. I mean, I'll be big day tomorrow. I told my wife, I said, honey, I pray that God help me live to get you in, in, in a little apartment which we're in Maryland Towers, low income, in our Social Security. And I said, I pray God help me get you in a, in a room and then I'm ready. And I'm ready. I mean, before I go out this door, if God takes me to heaven, that'll be the greatest thing ever happened. And uh, if he wants to use me, that's fine. If he doesn't, I'm ready to go. My mom and dad are there. Praise the Lord. My mom and dad is there, and I want to see. I want to see. I want to see Jesus. And uh, the apostle Paul and Peter, and all those great apostles, and Mary and Esther, and and Ruth, Ruth the Gentile, uh, who the bloodline came through her bloodline, the the, the royal family to Jesus' birth. And uh, and came down. Hey, that's all bad to die. I mean, uh, I, I'm like Paul. I mean, yeah, to live is Christ, but to die is what? Yeah. But to die is gain. I mean, woo! I mean, to go to heaven and live forever and to sit the gold and, and shout whatever. I mean, never be tempted again and no trials, no tests, no suffering, no cancer, no pain. I tell you what, I'll, I'll take it any day. I'll, I'll take it any day. So this may be my last sermon, so I'm going to work you over good. So this may be my last sermon. With four, four bypass, open heart surgery, and the cancer. 20% chance to come back, and I said, honey, with that bang, they reversed, I made them reverse it after three months. Right. And I told the doctor, I said, I, and I told her, I said, honey, don't, don't, don't feel bad, but I'll never have another bag. I will not. If it comes back, I can be taking these products and praying. I said, if it comes back, I said, that's it. I said, I'm not, I'm not going to go through that. I'm not going, I'm sorry, I'm not going through, honey. I'm going to say goodbye to you because I'm, I'm not going to go through that again. But anyway, but anyway, uh, he said his grace is sufficient. So, the sin of unbelief, putting it off tomorrow. Billy Graham said that we are only one heartbeat away from eternity. Somebody could die before we get out of the service this morning. I mean, or uh, before this day is over, Pastor David might, might get a phone call that one of you good godly people, the, the good die as well as the bad, the young die as well as the old. And so, anyway, but un Unbelief. So, if you, uh, if you, uh, now I've got to make my notes here. But anyway, the devil trying to convince you to put it off. And uh, but if you reject God over and over, now that's my experience after 40 years of pastor. Let me tell you, this. I've seen it happen. If you reject God over and over and over and over, that's very dangerous. He only has to speak to you one time to be a just God. But God's a merciful God, and He's going to speak maybe several times before He gets your attention. And He got mine on the first one. And it scared me. I thought I was going to die and go to hell there in my room. But anyway, but if you, if God speaks to you and you say no, 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 the Bible said, now I didn't, I didn't get time to look it up. Maybe Pastor David knows this reference. I didn't look it up. But, uh, I, I know it's in the Bible. Psalm, Proverbs, somewhere. There is a, there, there, there can be a time that people will call on me and I will not answer. Now maybe that don't scare you, but it does me. 
I mean, I, I'm going to adopt a Christian. Now, if you come out of your deathbed and you never heard to find salvation, you don't have an opportunity, whatever. Oh yeah, God saved you like the man on Carl Death Hill said He could save you on your deathbed and whatever. But you come out of your deathbed and, and you live 20, 30, 40 years of willful sin and reject it, reject it, reject. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes on deathbed. I I wouldn't want to try to call out to God when I said no, 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 and now I want a quick way to heaven. I'm not sure that's going to work. I hope it does, but I'm not sure. You're 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 trying dangerous ground. So, uh, I'm not going to take that chance. I know you're not either. A preacher was preaching at a meeting, an evangelist at a camp meeting, and there was a man about two-thirds of the way back, and the Holy Spirit told him to go back and talk to him. He was under conviction. And so the preacher was kind of embarrassed. He didn't really want to kind of spot the man out, but he went back. I would say on this side, about two-thirds back. There's nobody there. Thank the Lord for that. And, uh, and so, anyway, he went back and told him, you know, that God told him to come back and you know, get away. You're, you're, you're embarrassing me. You're, you know. So the pastor finally went back to the platform, you know. And man, the conviction was still on him. And he went back to the man again. And that man really got mad and started cursing. He told me, get out. He didn't want nothing to do with him or God. And uh, so he went home that night. And he took sick. That night, he went home and got deadly sick. They called the paramedics. They called the preacher, called the evangelist. They come over. He's in his bedroom. And uh, and uh, and the man is dying. I mean, they were standing in the service that night, and, and before midnight, he was in eternity. And so the preacher went over there and tried to talk to him, and he was screaming, saying, "Demons are in here! You know, get get out, get it, get 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 out, talk about." And and so I mean, I mean, they 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 wanted to witness to him, they, but they I mean, he was just screaming that he was lost. And then right before he died, he said, "I could." He told his wife, "He said I could feel the fire at my toes, my feet. The fire of hell started at his feet and came up to his body, and he was taken out to eternity." My friend, let me tell you something. You can play games with me, play games with Pastor David, but please don't play games with God. Because, 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 because I, I promise you, I do. I, some things I don't know. This I do know. You will lose if you play games with God. And so that man made fun. He cursed and he screamed into eternity. Uh, law. The Bible says you have to come when the Spirit draws you. If you're not drawn by the Spirit and if you're not convicted, you probably are not going to turn from sin. You'll probably just keep doing what you're doing. But if you feel convicted, the Bible says godly sorrow worketh what? It worketh repentance. Godly sorrow work with penance, all right? Uh, the third, the third, third sin, and I don't know who this is for here, but this is where I kind of felt maybe someone's here. The first sin, original sin, the second sin is a sin of unbelief, and, and the third sin is a willful sin. Willful sin. See, we all make mistakes ever. If you want to say we sin every day, we're involved day, that's okay if you're talking about mistakes. But don't please don't please, please don't talk that way. That, that you're out here living in a life of sin and you're still safe because it don't it don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And, you know, Dr. Gandhi at God's Bible College where I went was a Greek scholar, and he said, uh, "If the devil can make a perfect sinner, God can make a perfect saint." Now, when I say perfect, I don't mean up here in the head. I'm talking about the heart. In Matthew five seven, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The holiness that God requires for you to live is to love God with all of your heart. So find the strength. That's the best we can do. If you want to call mistakes sins, well then we sin. If you want to call that whatever, but 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 if you're a Christian, you better not be willfully, willfully, repeatedly, over and over, committing the same sin, because you're in trouble. You're in trouble if you're doing that. This uh, you can commit this sin before you get saved. Well, you know you do. You commit sin when you know better, when you get older. But then what I'm saying to you this morning, here, here, here's a thought that I have for somebody here, that even after you get saved, the devil can tempt you. In 1 John chapter 3, it says, He that committed, and that word committed there in the Greek means, uh, we get the English word practice. He that committed or practiced sin. I mean, you can fall into sin and, and have that's time to forgive you and keep on going. But it's one thing to make a mistake or even to sin, but it's another thing to keep doing something when you know it's wrong. Oh, and, and so he that committed or he that practiced sin. You know what John said? 
He's of the devil. Now, I didn't say that. That's what God said. My cousin Tony Cash is eternal security in Baptist, and I have him preach every year for me. I said, Tony, just don't preach my pulpit. You can preach anything you want to preach. Because I believe you got to live right to die right. right. And, 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 uh, and, uh, so, you know, his wife left him 15 years ago. Poor Tony's a great, he, he's a real popular preacher. Uh, he's been evangelist for 40 years. I've been pastor 40. We call each other about every night. And he's very popular over in, in Johnson City area. Everybody knows Tony Cash. He could have been a professional basketball player, turned it all down to preach. And um, he averaged 29 points a game. He was the best in the nation from the free throw. He was number one. He was the best. Uh, out of 100 baskets, he hit probably 80, 85 out of 100 from the free throw without this. And uh, God called him to he had minister. But I said, Tony, you can you come. Don't, don't preach it. Now, if you believe that you can get saved and still keep sinning and keep doing what you did back in your own life. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell you that it's not going to work. Right. And uh, because willful sin is what separates us from God. Yeah, right. And so anyway, will, willful. So the, the third sin is a willful sin. Uh, the willful sin. And uh, this is committed before, like I said, you know, and, uh, and after. Saints. St. John chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus came to take away our sin. Does it not say that? St. Yes. John 3, 5. Does not Paul say in the book of Romans, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And what does it say? What does forbid me? It means no! Now, two days life left him. Somebody told him she was cheating on him. She raised four girls, all Christians. But then she went berserk by four. And... Uh, and uh, and so Tudy, they told him about her cheating, and uh, he couldn't believe it. So he hired a private detective, and Tudy come back on the weekend meeting preaching. And uh, the detective said, Tudy, I don't want to show you these pictures. You know, his wife used to be a Christian, raised her four girls, and they all were they married ministers or Christians. They're all serving God, but something happened. Something happened. Chemistry in her body, her brain, mind. The devil, the devil, of course, called her to do it. But anyway, she committed. You know, and, and so. He took a picture of her coming out of the hotel with another man. She went through about five minutes where he called her. And I think I think one of them was a different race, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, when he confronted her, then that's when she, you know, moved out. So Tony, for 15 years now, I've been preaching. Uh, I'm telling you, he's kept his life pure and holy and godly man. And uh, but I but I said to him, I mean, I didn't want to say this to him, Pastor David, it was embarrassing. I didn't want to make it feel like I knew more than he did. But, but I'm going to tell you something. I don't, I don't care when his wife got saved. I don't care what she professed. And, and I, I said to one of the other relatives, I said, do you believe? Because my uncle believes in that, you know. He believes in it strong, you know. And he's also a Democrat. I hope you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so anyway, and, and, and listen, Paul's a godly man now. I mean, Ralph, Ralph, my uncle. He's the only one left out of 15 kids in my dad's family on the boy's side. And he is a good man. You know, our heads will be messed up when we have, you know, I know when I go there, but be a lot of things. I think I'm right, but I'm sure I'll get there, Steve. I'm, I'm going to find out that I was wrong a few things. And I don't care as long as I get in. I don't, he does the way he wants to. Yeah, what what I get right. in. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, Ralph wanted to debate with me on the eternal security, man. And I'll tell you what, every verse in the Bible, I think it's against it. And Tony thinks every verse in the Bible is for us. And listen, we've never argued. We, we just talk and debate. He said, well, wait, I'll say one thing. I'll talk to Matthew Preacher. They tell me what they believe, but not why. But he said, you know, I will give you credit. He said, you you know why, what, what, you, what you believe. And uh, so anyway, but I said, Ralph, to my uncle, this just a few weeks ago. I said, Ralph, you believe to his wife was saved when he got married? Well, you, you know, he, she was a good Christian, godly woman, raised her children, brought a family owner. I said, I said, okay, when she backslid, I mean, when she cheated on Tony and commit sexual sins. By the way, the Bible says, fornicators shall not, what is it? Fornicators shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And you don't have to commit fornication in the act. If you lust what Jesus said, if you look at a woman to lust. That is, you would if you could. Now, it doesn't mean you can't be tempted. It doesn't mean the bird can't land on your head, but you don't have to let it build a nest. And so, fornicators shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says a drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Liars are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. I mean, I tell you, God's pretty strict now, I'm telling you. And, uh, but anyway, I said, well, when Tony's wife was in bed with a man, 
I said, if Cooney was in bed, uh, if his wife was in bed with a man, and if the rapture came, would she go to heaven? I, I asked him. Well, yeah, Wayne, yeah, uh, her works will be burned up, but she'll go to heaven. I'm sorry, my friend. I'm sorry. The Bible says God's a holy God. There's no sin going to get into heaven. The, the Bible says God is holy. The angels are holy. Uh, the prophets were holy. Apostle Paul was a godly man. Holy, holy. The Bible says without holiness, no man shall see God. But that doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you have perfection of your head. But, 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 but Jesus said the whole Bible, the whole Bible is contingent on two, uh, on two commandments. The whole Bible. Love the Lord God with all of your heart this half. And then your neighbor is yourself. See, yeah, I want my Bible to be done. And uh, so, love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then what? Love your neighbor as you That hinges you the whole law of God right there. And so, anyway, um, anyway, we're to love God with all our heart. And I think we stop the sin business when we get saved. Uh, we stop it to the best of our by the help of we can't do it ourselves. But as I said it when I got saved, Lord, if you'll Holy Spirit, if you'll help me, I'll do it. And Pastor David, I tell you what, the Bible says, greater is he that is within you than what? Than he that is in the world. So if you back so I don't blame God, it's your fault. You either quit going to church like you should, you quit reading your Bible, you quit praying. So when the hour of temptation comes, and that sore, the parable, you know, some of them forward and whatever, and some endured for a while, but but by and by they were choked down and they were offended. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what the Bible says. I didn't write that. And I tell you what, not everybody that starts is going to finish. Now you can right. you can you can go to the New York race up there, whatever they run, marathon, and you can get a, a bracelet or whatever. Everybody wins. Uh, that crosses the line, right? You don't have to be first at, at the marathon in New York to get a better day. If you run it and if you just barely get across that line, then, you, you know, you made it. Yeah. But I tell you what, would anybody get a medal in the marathon in New York if they just quit, stopped, and dropped down and went to the side? Would, would they still get, well, you tried here, we'll give you a medal? No. And my friend, when you start this Christian race, I don't care whether you run in or whether you crawl in or whether you, whatever, but you, you're going to have if you quit, if you quit, you're in trouble. That's right. You're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong with that. But I, but I, but I, I, I believe that willful committed sin is dangerous. Uh, so if you backslide, how many know the story of Revelation? David, let me come back and go through my salvation. Let me finish this. Can I come back and do this? Uh, the Bible says that. And willful sin. Uh, that when we backslide. In Revelation chapter 2. Are you familiar with the church of Ephesus? Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicean, Sardis, all those churches. Which are periods in the ch Gentile church age. We will get into that. But he said to the church of Ephesus, I know that your works are good. And you have a labor of love. See, just read the poor is not going to get you to heaven. If you, you, you have to feed the poor and love God. They have to go together. And so he said, I know thy works, and thy labor of love, I have somewhat against you. You have left your first love. You know how when you first got saved, man, you're all excited? I mean, listen, when I got saved, man, I was in every... I mean, I went to churches and church. I mean, I, I went to uh, services in churches that scared me to death. People speaking in tongues, and and, and 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 this one guy interpreted, which was beautiful. I liked it. Another guy spoke in tongues, and nobody interpreted. And I thought, oh, 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 wait a minute. I don't know about that. And uh, and so uh, anyway, and I'm sitting back here, and the pastor said, "Boy, an angel had been here in this seat, and if somebody here wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost, come and sit in this chair." I said, "Oh dear Lord, I've not been sanctified yet, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I didn't know what to do." And I'm sitting there praying. And you believe a Nazarene pastor was there, got upset in that seat. And so, yeah, yeah, but now, but now you clap, you don't go clap when I tell you this. They was praying, and I was praying. But I'm just a young convert, and I'm gullible for anything. I mean, I'm just, 
I went to Baptist, the Methodist, the Pentecost, the Church of God, man. If they had revival, I took a bunch of boys and we go Kurt Illinois to the Millicentic Tabernacle and heard somebody oh, preach yeah. all the way back. And uh, yeah, I told my mother, I said, Well, you call me Wayne Friday. I hate Wayne. I mean, there's Billy Sunday, Billy Graham. What do you mean, Billy Friday? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we went to Billy Graham place over there. I mean, uh, work, work, Wheaton, Illinois. And uh, so anyway, uh, anyway, God told me, He said, You lost your first love. You know, you remember when you first got said that excitement you had? I just want to ask one of you here. Do, do you have the excitement now that you had when you first got saved? If you don't, then you need to rededicate your life. You need to ask God to forgive. Because you know what God said to the church Ephesus? He said, if you don't repent and do what? The first work over again. He said, I will come and remove the tension. Is that what he said? Yeah. Now, if God removes it, now I didn't learn this in Bible college, but I just believe this. If God removes a candlestick, you can't have a candle. They don't stand up on their own. There has to be a candlestick to put the candle in. If God removes a candlestick, there's no candle. And if there's no candle, there's no light. And the Bible says we do not walk in darkness. The children of God do not walk in that. We walk in the light. First John 1 7. We walk in the light as he is in the light. Now look at that little word, if, if, if. Yeah. Look it up in what the dictionary. It means condition. Mm -hmm. If we walk, I'm going to tell you the bottom line is this only God is saved. You and I are on probation. It's wonderful I got saved at 19. But I tell you what, when I walk out of here today, if I face temptation, I'm still going to, because God never takes your will away. He'll never take your will. He created Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve perfection, more better than us. And look what they did. But he didn't take away their will. They had such angelic glory that they were naked. But when they sinned, then they saw their nakedness when they backslid. Right. And I'll tell you what, when you backslide, what happens? Then condemnation comes back into your heart. You don't, you know, you know something's wrong, something's not right. There's condemnation. Now, now you can't be a Christian and feel a temporary condemnation. The devil can put something on you that it may not be your fault, you know. So you got you got to pray and ask God to help you because you can't go through a depression or discouragement and you may feel like you're condemned. Well, don't 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 believe you're lost just because you feel that because it could be a depression of the devil. It may not be God. Just wait and pray and seek God, you know, and and you know you know He will help you. And um, but anyway, um, committing. Committing willful sin. Do the first work over, or I will come and remove the candlestick. And then what did he say in Revelation chapter 3 about the lukewarm church? Here we are living in the dispensation of the lukewarm church age, where a lot of people, big churches, pay their tithe, go to church, and they're just as lost as they can be. They think by paying the tithe and by shaking the preacher's hand or whatever, they know nothing about repentance and giving their heart to God. And so anyway, uh, I tell you, friends, you've got to live right. I don't want to tell you. You have to live right. right. The Bible says in the Old Testament, as a tree falleth, so shall it lie. Right. If you're living in willful sin when you die, you're in trouble. If you have faith in God, then you're going you're gonna to make it. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to make it. Amen. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. And if any of us make it, it'd be because of the grace of God. Amen? Amen. But I say, here, here's my message now for somebody. I don't know who it is, but God put this on my heart. If there's anybody here living in sin, you know it's wrong, but oh well, what's we'll saved all say, well, no, my works will be burned up, but God, you know, whatever. If there's anybody here that is living in sin and you know better than what you're doing, you know better what you're doing. I, God sent me here to tell you that you need to do the first work. You need to get back and repent to God and get the joy, the joy back in your heart. Uh, you need to repent. You need to repent and get back to God. You know what Matthew chapter 7, 13, 14? Does anybody know what that says? Matthew chapter 7, 13, 14. What did Jesus say? Who said that? Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. 
Because broad is a way many are going to go therein, right? So I tell people, best way to go to hell, just do nothing. Best way to go to hell, just don't do nothing. But it says, because straight, now Jesus said this, I did. Because straight is the way and narrow, somebody finish it. I didn't hear it, but I, I have a little hard hearing. What does it say at the end of that verse? Few be there that find. Few there be that find. Now, man, I tell you what, I, I feel like I'm saved and sanctified. God filled me with His Holy Spirit. And give me a gift of soul winning. But I, I, I'm going to tell you something. And be a soul winner, you've got to be tactful and use wisdom. There's nobody who wants religion pushed down their throat. So you've got to have wisdom to do that. To be a soul winner, you've got to have it. And I'll come back. Pastor David, let me maybe talk about the planet salvation and, and about being a soul winner. But you've got to love sinners. You've got to have compassion. If you don't have compassion and love, if you don't weep for the lost, you probably never win them. You probably never win them unless you can weep for them. The Bible says if you go weeping, bearing precious seed, you will come again, Amen. bringing the sheaves oh, with yes. you. Put that in my notes. I didn't put that in my notes. Amen. Bringing the sheaves with you, bearing precious seed, which is the Word of God. Amen? Yes. Amen. Which is the Word, the Word of God. So if anybody here committing what we saying, if you're living with somebody, you're not married to them, I tell you what, you may fool your pastor and me and somebody else, but you're not fooling God. I tell you what, because the Bible says, listen to this, Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. Does anybody know what that says? I don't even have it thrown out here, but I know, I know what it says. It says that fornicators, adulterers, liars, people that's using drugs to get high, homosexuals, lesbians, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now that's what it says. And in, uh, in Revelation chapter 21, it says, He that is righteous, let him be right, uh, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, that's been filled with the Holy Ghost, that's been sanctified. Holy. He that is holy, let him be holy still. But my friend, heaven is a holy place. And you know, you know, I'm not, forgive me, but I'm an old Methodist. I, I, I'm not the modern Methodist. I'm the old shot Methodist. Praise God. I'm the old John Wesley. Confess your sins and turn from them and live right. I have one of the John. Anybody heard John Wesley? Raise your hand. John Wesley, a few of them. Founder of Methodism. Um, I've got one of his sermon books, the original. When I was in Bible school college, I went down to a bookstore and they had two of them. The guy would let me have both of them. But he let me have one. I, I got the quote cut up here. The perfect credit, 1770, 1776 or 1767, John Wesley had the original copy. And Wesley has a sermon in there that you won't hear in Methodist churches anywhere. He got a sermon on dress. I tried to preach it in my congregation, but boy, I had to be careful with those. A lot of them come half naked. I had to be careful I didn't fit anybody. But you know, back in the old 1700s, it, you know, it, back in the 1700s, I mean, all women wore dresses down to the ground. And, you know, so Wesley, when he and Charles started that holy club, which turned into a great revival that swept all over England, and that's how Methodism came to America and spread all over the world. Uh, these women in John's holy club, they were stepping on the dress. And my wife heard about Pastor David's wife. The same thing with And uh, they let him up two inches because he's walking on. He's walking on. <laughs> and so they come to that holy club with those two inches above the ground. Now this is back 1700. Wesley couldn't preach that way. He'd be, he'd be thrown out. Uh, if he'd come back, he'd probably turn on the grave. He'd be like, worldliness and wickedness is going but they, he saw them come in two inches and he said ye ladies of London well, that's where Wesley's from England. you go over and see the chapel in London ye ladies of London he said letting your dresses up why disgrace me before I <laughs> oh me what would he think of us today how do you and uh, but why you disgrace me before I die? But anyway, 
I, I'm glad we've got this in the here with you. And I'm glad it's not the out of the parent, but it's the heart that he Amen. Uh, you know, we look on the outside, but God looks on the inside. And so, you know, God looks on the inside. Amen? Amen. The fourth and last one. I'm going to close. And David says, Amen. That's all. The fourth and last one is the sin of blasphemy. Now, I'm not going to go into this. I'm just going to barely mention it. The sin of blasphemy. Now, I remember I just told my third point. If there's anybody here that is practicing sin, I'm telling you, you need, you need to ask God to help you. Confess it and present it. You know what it says in Proverbs? This is in my plan of salvation next time I get it. Proverbs 28, 13. He that confesseth and forsaketh sin, God will have mercy. Amen. So, you've got to forsake the old life. That man, if you're cheating on your wife, you need to quit. And if, ladies, if you're cheating on your husband, you, you need to quit. But don't, 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 don't keep professing and thinking that you're going to make it. So, if there's anybody here practicing sin, I want to get that main point. If you're living in sin, I'm here to tell you to repent and strive to live a holy life. That's all Indians can do. Strive. The Bible says strive to enter in at the straight gate, doesn't it? And that's all any of us can do. And uh, But anyway, the last sin of uh, blasphemy, blasphemy, of course, as you already know, your, pa your dear pastor here, I'm sure, is preached on his sweet wife. Maybe I appreciate your wife. She's got a sweet spirit like my wife. If, if, if you met my wife, you met your wife. She's just humble and sweet and beautiful like your wife. And, but I told my mother, I told, hey, listen, I told people, I said, you know, they said, you know, wait, uh, my mom said, yeah, wait, but you're the ugliest of five. But I tell people, it's amazing how you prove over the years. I mean, it's amazing. You didn't catch it. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, there's a sin of blasphemy. Which is, the Bible says it's unpardonable. If the Holy Spirit deals with you, if He deals with you, you can reject Him, and He'll deal with you again, probably. He's a merciful God. He's a merciful God. And like I say, if you, God don't want you to sin, but if you do, just get back up and go on. Don't let Him beat you down about it. And, 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 I, and I want to say this very carefully here on this blasphemy. Because I, in 40 years of pastoral, I've had people that thought they blasphemed the Holy Spirit when they didn't. And the devil just beat them down about it. They thought they could send away whatever. And uh, I mean, I had a lady in my church right over here at Fair Park Western Methodist. She went to the Dollywood and she felt like she wasn't supposed to go. She went anyway. And when she came back, she thought she committed the impartable sin and she thought had a nervous breakdown. I went crazy. Well, I go to Dollywood. I, I, not, I don't go on Sunday, but I'll go Monday through Saturday if it's open. Uh, boy, the devil beat her down, told her that she committed a total sin, difficult, you know. And, and I said, Hazel, I said, you did not commit. And I prayed with her, and I prayed him. You mean, Brother Friday, you, 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 you feel like I'm sick? Yes, I know, yes. And I, you know, I helped her through that. She's the organ player and the treasurer of the church. And now she just, she's a godly woman, gets blessed, godly woman. And, uh, but listen, if the devil tries to tell you that you crossed a deadline, don't believe it. Don't believe him. Don't let him take you there. You say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Don't say, I rebuke you. No, no, that's dangerous. But the Bible said, when you can tell the devil, you say, Satan, the Lord, the Lord rebuke you. Yes, yes. And you just tell him to get out. So if you're here, or anybody here, you're a little discouraged, depressed, you think maybe you've done something wrong, and the devil's trying to tell you you can't be whatever, I'm here to tell you he's a liar. Amen. And, that, and that you have not crossed a deadline. Not very many people ever crossed a deadline. Correct? I only know one in my 40 years of ministry that crossed a deadline. Only one. I don't know if Pastor David knows it, but I know one. And theologians, I'm told, someone told me, that if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost within 24 hours, you're dead. You, you will be dead. You'll be a devil. Uh, I don't know that story enough. That's just what he told me. But I was over here on Alcoa Highway, and a man was pulled over in a little camper, and I thought I'd stop see if he needed help. And of course, you know me, I probably went this to him. Oh, I don't want anything to do with God. And, uh, and in fact, while I was standing there, he took his fist 
and curse God while I was standing there. And I said, sir, I said, you can curse God and get by with it. But I said, please don't curse Jesus. He raised his fist up and he started cursing Jesus. Now I said, sir, you can blaspheme Jesus and you can curse him out and you can be forgiven. But I said, don't curse the Holy Spirit. He lifted his fist up and looked up into heaven and cursed the Holy Spirit. Chills come up. I thought he was going to drop dead right there. I, I, it's a miracle he didn't drop dead right there. That man's talking hell right now. The Bible says you will not be forgiven in this life or the life to come if you curse the Holy Spirit. Because I'm going to tell you something. God's a perfect gentleman. He's not going to push you to the altar. He's not going to beg you. He stands at the door and he knocks. And he's got his arms outstretched. But whosoever will may come. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. The curse God. But anyway, I'm sure none of you uh, none of you did. Well, let, 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 let me conclusion, David. I'm close. In the plan of salvation, this is the way I was going to close. I was sitting at me in a coffee shop. I'm, I'm sorry. If you don't like coffee, that, that's your that's your fault. I'm, I'm listen, I'm a gourmet coffee drinker. I get the bean and I used to always grind it. And boy, I poured I French press. I mean I drink it strong and black. Uh, and anybody like coffee here besides me? Am I the only one who likes coffee? Oh, you guys must be sanctified here. <laughs> and they and they kind of kicked me at church. Well, Pastor Brown, you're buying this expensive coffee, whatever. You 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 you, you get on Social Security, you can buy vultures. My wife my wife went and bought a can of vultures and I threw I mean she then got a can of vultures and I stuff tastes so terrible. I mean and uh so I said, hey, I'll tell you what I'll do. See, my allowance when I was pastoring, she gave me twenty dollars a week. I mean, that was my allowance. That's what I had to. That's what I could go to the coffee shop and want to give you a donut. And she paid all the other bills. Now that I'm retired, I'm down to five. I'm down to two to five dollars a uh, five dollars a month now. My, my, my allowance is five dollars a month. <laughs> and I said, honey, I said, listen, don't give me a lot. Don't you know? Don't worry about giving me a lot. Just get my own make off. I just. So the other day she looked in her file, you know, and our social security comes the twenty second of this month. Now honey, we're getting down close and but here's ten dollars and go to Vienna and get because what I like is that Ethiopian. Does anybody know where a coffee bean originated from? Does anybody here to raise your hand? If you know where the first bean was ever discovered, raise your hand. Is there anybody? Where? Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Yes, you're right. Ethiopia in Africa. Now don't tell me God God put that bean there. Huh? <laughs> and they discovered it, you know. And, and Ethiopia. I love the Ethiopian bean. And so I went into Vienna the other day and I took my lots. And I said, now I'm buying this. Because they charge two dollars thirty-eight cents for a cup of hand poured. And I said, now that I'm buying this, do you mind just go ahead and make Oh yeah, Pastor Brown. Yeah, sure, yeah. So I got my free well, I mean I got two dollars thirty eight cents off to it. But I, anyway, I may have to go to Fulgin, but I'm not going to unless I have to. <laughs> but I may have to. But anyway, here's what I want to close. I'm gonna do this in plant salvation, but I'll go ahead. In case something happens to me, I won't get back. But I, I do I, I take I take what? If Pastor David lets me come back, go through the simple plan of salvation. Which is basic. It's just simple. You know, see your need of God. Jesus is the only way. He provided by His blood. There's a danger of rejecting. You have to repent of your sin, turn from your sin, and then accept Christ by faith. That's the plan of salvation. But I want to explain to you what faith is, because most people don't know what faith is, because you can't see it. But the Lord told me how to explain what faith is. So I'm going to wait and give that simple plan of salvation to Pastor David and let me do that. And, uh, but anyway, take your Bible in closing, in conclusion now. Look at Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 in closing. Raise your hand when you find it. Luke chapter 19. I'm sorry, I, I know time. I wish all the references I give you, I wish I could have time to read them to you, but. You, if you wrote them down, you can read it when you get home. Okay, you found Revelation, I mean Luke chapter 19. 
Luke chapter 19. Man, this is powerful. Uh, this, this is powerful. You know where I got it? Pastor David? I went to Vienna Coffee Shop months ago. Went in to get a cup of coffee. And there's a guitar set in there. And they had this rope right on the guitar. And you know what I said? If you go to Vienna, how many know where Vienna Coffee Shop? I, I bet you don't even know. It's over by Merrill College. There's a side street there. And there's Vienna Coffee Shop. He grossed his own bean and everything. He sent it all over the country. By Ethiopia. So anyway, I go in there, sit down, and have a cup of coffee. I look over. There's a guitar that they have there all the time. It it, it it's one of the part of the furniture. And here's what it says. It says that Jesus. This is what I'm gonna close my place up at, but I'm gonna close it. Jesus loves losers. That got my attention. I I, I thought that's pretty good. Jesus loves losing. Okay, now look at Luke chapter 19. And Pastor David, read that out loud real clear. Uh, verse uh, 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The Son of Man came to seek and what? To save. To save. That's what Pastor David was doing in his godly work. They're trying to seek and save that which is lost. Now, Zacchaeus was a rich man, but he was a loser, right? Before he got saved. <clears throat> Nicodemus was a rich young ruler, had high education, but he was a loser. Until he met Jesus. I believe Nicodemus made it. You know what? I don't know you dear people. I don't know if there's some woman here from this location, but I have no idea. I don't I don't know you your pastor knows you. I don't. God knows. But the woman at the well, now she was poor, but she was a woman. He said, you not only have five husbands, you, the one you're living with is not your husband. You remember that story? I believe that woman at the well is in heaven right now. I believe she's there. I think all the other, other I, I, I believe that if they didn't accept Christ, she'd drunk by the common name and common name. But she was a loser. And she is poor. But I believe she made it. I believe she made it heaven. The Gentile woman. Let me tell you somebody else was a loser. The one called adultery. The Pharisee with the long hair and the long robe. And I do. I believe in modesty. I do. I preach it. I don't name stuff out, but I just use the Bible. The Bible says women be modest. Men lift up holy hands. So all I do is quote scripture, let the Holy Spirit convict people because I, I have to have new light. I've got to grow. There's same areas God, God, God's working on me. That's probably more than what you're doing and the way you look because the heart is what counts. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is the woman called the doctor. Here's this Pharisee, this religious crowd that had the long robes and all the standards. Ready to stone. But who did Jesus stand with? He stood beside that adulterous woman. You know, that just tells me how great God is. How compassionate, how kind He is. He said, you without sin cast the first stone. Well, nobody can cast it. Hold on. But what did He say to the woman? And this goes back to my sermon I felt for somebody. What did He say to the woman when He walked away? He said, neither do I condemn thee. But go send no more numbers. He said, man, quit your sin. Quit. Go send no more. I believe that woman probably was in heaven. And she was a loser. And I just want to tell you in closing, friends, if you say, Pastor Friday, Pastor David, I'm a loser. I'm a loser. I want you to know that God is your best friend. Yes. I want you to know that He loves you. I don't care if you are a loser. I was a loser before I got saved. But God loves losers. He loves. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so if you're here, if you feel like you're a loser, I just want you to know that God loves you. He loves you. He wants to be your friend. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. It says, for it is time to seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord. Amen. So you feel, if there's anybody here, you feel like you're a loser, I want you to know that you're special with God. 
You are special to God. I don't care how deep your sin is. You are special to God. Amen? Amen. So, uh, David, if you come or somebody, we can just sing just what would you sing invitation just as I am or uh, Pastor David, you give me all the call. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand. I hope you know that Pastor Friday has poured his heart out to you. I hope you know him from his heart, his testimony he gave you that conviction in his heart worked for a month. Did you get that? He prayed a prayer at a bar stool. And conviction worked continually for a month on him. And at his bedside in his bedroom at home, he surrendered to Jesus. You know, the Bible says that, that the Spirit of God won't always strive with the man. So as Pastor Friday urge you not to put off rededication or salvation. I want to take up that banner too and encourage you don't wait. Don't let the devil lie to you that you got time. I hear that so many times from people. I'm not ready yet. I've not settled. I've not got everything where it needs to be. Not where I want to be to be where he wants me to be. I'm not ready. But I want to tell you, don't listen to him. Don't listen to that voice. No. Because you'll never be ready. Don't let the Spirit down because he's drawing you to a relationship with him. Yes. Not only you know where you're at in, in <coughs> that walk. You know we're we're at a we're at a place of decision. And I think Pastor Friday brought you here through the Word of God, through the Spirit of God for a day like today. God's love is so powerful today, just as it was. You see, the Bible says that He was crucified before the foundation of the world. That tells me that His love was so great before He created us that it's going to last all the way through this time. If you choose Him. If you choose Him. My wife and I started on a walk 25 years ago in marriage after Friday 41 years ago. 46 years ago and I made a commitment that as we walked this walk I was going to love her and I was going to honor her <coughs> and respect her you see when you choose to do something you, you need to realize that God loves you but he and you need to respect who each other are. Because if you lose that respect, the love's not so deep. It takes a lot of work to change it.
the longer you wait, the most likely the percentage is lower that you'll ever step out. But maybe it was just for this lady. I, I, I found one person, but I didn't know. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a prop. I'm just a, just a farm boy. And, but anybody else? Let's wait about 30 seconds, just real quick. If you want to step out right now and come up and rededicate your life, or you're not living like you should, and you will ask God to forgive, would you just step out right now and join this lady and let Pastor David pray with you? Would you do it? She, she said she had felt drawn to rededicate her life in another church and then she felt rejected. You know, that's a good thing. The world rejects it. You know, but God will never reject you. No. If you're being rejected or feel rejected, you're in the wrong place. Yes. You know, God don't look on the flesh, you know. Pastor Friday was preaching, he was talking about the dress and everything. And, you know, he mentioned, he said Adam and Eve was naked in the Garden of Eden. And then they put on clothes, you know, and they were way down covering everything. And now, you know, it kind of starts, it kind of ends like it's going to start. You know, it ends like it's going to start. You, If you match up the book of Revelation with the book of Genesis, you go back and forth through the scriptures, through the through the chapters, they line up, they, you know, it's going to end like it finishes, you know, and the devil has a parallel. Well, we're walking into the parallel, the devil's trying to address everybody again. You know? It don't make no difference how you come. It's just like Pastor Bryce said, it's a, it's a it's a heart matter. It's a it's a love matter. It's a relationship with Christ matter. It's not what you look like. It's not how pretty or how ugly you are. And I don't believe a word of what Pastor Price said about him being the ugly five. You know, that's just being humble, but uh, you know, God don't care. And to be perfect. Be, to be perfect is to be doing exactly what God called you to do. Yes, yes, You can be perfect in your commitment, you know, and that's what it's all about. So, you know, we have to learn, we have to, to be led, just like the Ethiopian and Philip. Philip came alongside and he was reading Isaiah 53, and Philip said, Do you understand what you read? He said, how can I accept someone come along and explain it to me? And Philip got up there on that, on that carriage thing and sat down there with him and started explaining what he was reading. Lined up, lined up with Christ being the Lamb of God. you got to be teachable. And you got to start somewhere. The Bible says don't despise small beginnings. So if you're here and the Lord's been speaking to you, now's the time to come. We're at the end of the service today. Doesn't mean that sometime today you can't get somewhere alone with the Lord confess to the Lord that you're a sinner. You need to be saved by His grace. Yes. It's between you and Him anyway. But we're here to pray with you. It's good to have support. It's good to have some, some strength behind you. And we're here to love you and help you do that. And that's why we gather here on Sunday and Wednesday. Pastor Trula has service here on Sunday morning at 9 and 12 and uh, praise God it's just she needs come on baby. come on praise the Lord if you're not accepted you're a nurse shot praise the Lord especially here I'm grateful we'll have you alive amen praise the Lord Thank you.
she's been, uh, how, how long have you been in the church down there? Uh, probably two, maybe two years. Like I knocked on the door and uh, she scared her to death. And so she came to church, she was a professed lesbian and she tried to commit suicide and see Mark's on her where she tried to commit suicide. And she came to the altar and got saved. Pretty she got her hair real beautiful. She loves the Lord. She got a little bit of But she's one of my best friends. Did you know that this woman, when she was young, she was on so many drugs, she she uh, destroyed herself emotionally. She destroyed herself. And but, but, but God has forgiven her. But this woman right here, you're looking at, she could have been a doctor, a medical doctor. She's got two books at home about that high. That's all she studied, medical time. She has a photo, she has a photographic mind. She called poetry. Until, until I was 19, I took my seizures for granted. But since then, I've seen what God gave to me. He yeah. taught me how to drink them one time without having to worry about the woman. Now she's just chicken all that. She's just too chicken to drink and all that. Yeah. Hey, Christy. Hey, Christy. Quote okay. the poem that you wrote. Quote the poem that one. The day the earth stood still. It started on a rainy night. I stared out my window. Paralyzed with fright. As I was looking, I was thinking, why is everyone else I start drinking? Then I saw a vision, and it was strange. So I said to myself, is my mind in that arranged? Then the horror at my door stood ringing. It was actually hell, and Satan was singing. It's a terrible story to me, if you will. I will say that it was the day that the earth stood still. Well, that's okay. I'll get it. I'll Christy, if, if you have 275, let's see, 275 and 350, what does that add up to? 275 and 350, yeah. 625. Yeah. That's what? 625. She's got a photographic line. <laughs> and, uh, and, and listen, she's got a beautiful voice. Just sing the last verse of, right. of Amazing Grace, the last verse. I'll get a book because I'm so nervous. Here, I'll, 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 the last verse. How about the Okay, the first Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found your pastor I, I don't go to church in charge and as the Lord provides so on the way out back there my son David put a picture of me and the coach and it's got a calendar on it and, and, you, uh, and there's also just a picture and that's it by itself he had him printed and paid there David paid several hundred dollars for me to get started and so there's pictures back there of just me and the coach if you'll take it put on your preacher and pray for me when I go to small churches and travel and uh, one of my professors, Dr. Mike Williams, has already asked me to come down to Georgia. He's taking a little church in retirement, and he wants a soul winning workshop. So take one of those back there, uh, back there, and then the track here, the, the plan of salvation God gave me 30 years ago was on this track. I just had it, had it, uh, had it put together uh, just about a month ago before I left, uh, retired and, and decided to go to full-time soul winning. So make sure you pick up that. They're two hundred dollars a thousand, so don't waste them. Pick up one or two or three. If you know somebody that's not a Christian, uh, just give to them because it tells about the blood of Jesus, and then it's got the plan of salvation. But I'll make sure sometime with you the plan of salvation, the sinner's prayer, and then the room on the back. You put your phone number where they can get a hold of you. Okay, and then right here, the lady that come up here and pray. I want is she still here? Yeah. I want you to have this. Honey. Take this with you, and. Uh, what this is, I used it about three years ago. I just found it in my briefcase. After you get saved, what then? And the whole thing is all scripture. There's no quotes in it. Uh, uh, what, what, what God did, 
Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, what you did, what God did, what's next, what about temptation, uh, what's next, what about temptation, what about other, it's all scripture, the whole thing is scripture. So, if you're a young Christian, I want you to go ahead and take one uh, back here, you can have that. 